Meteorologist Peter Hall joins us now. And, and Peter, uh, the greatest intensity is certainly over, but we noticed a lot of the bit, video we've seen has been where there's maybe a river near a town and then the floodwaters come up and then really overwhelm the community. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday that there was a pre, there was an event before the hurricane. There was a lot of heavy rain right over the Appalachia. You can almost see the, the track here by just following this line here. That's exactly how it went. We zoom in, you can actually see the Appalachians, which are right here and all the flooding reports. There's dam failures, not to mention wind damage in through here too. And here's a look at it on the radar, the core of whatever's left of Helene, which by the way, is not even a tropical system anymore. It's just a rainmaker over the Midwest in Ohio Valley. That's what this is. Almost all of this, which is associated with Helene, is going to miss us. It's just this arc of rain right here that may come our way. It's actually more of a warm front, really. There's Helene just spinning around there, but it's this little arc of rain, which is the front that came through yesterday, that has an opportunity to give us not only thicker clouds at times this weekend, but a chance for some sprinkles and light showers. This is more of a regional view, so let's bring you back home and talk about our weather hour by hour. You may have noticed how sunny the morning was, and now you can notice the sun almost looks hazy. That's the high thin clouds, and that's what we've got now. These clouds will will be around through the overnight hours and tomorrow morning. I think they're going to be about the same thickness tomorrow morning, which means I think the best chance for let's call it the brightest part of the day is the first half of the day filtered sun with clouds thickening. And inside that arc of clouds and rain that are thicker right here over the southern tier and Finger Lakes, this is going to try to move north and west slowly. So if you're going to the game, I'm hopeful that we have filtered sun leading to thicker clouds and hopefully any showers if there's going to be any for the game would happen after the game. The best chance late afternoon would be about Route 20 South, but this is pretty close. So it is possible that this rain will be nearby after the game. I think we're okay for tailgating. However, notice the temperature difference. 70 to 75 Syracuse North, roughly Route 20 North and further south. It's a little bit cooler due to less sun and some showers. Notice that these rain showers are still over the central and southern tier in Finger Lakes and now into central New York during the nighttime hours Saturday into Sunday morning. That thin band of rain is right over our area and then heading back south. I think Sunday probably a bit cloudier more often than Saturday, although we'll try to bring in some breaks of sun and any showers kind of fall apart. Most areas are probably only going to be in the 60s, although Syracuse might briefly just get over 70 during the afternoon. There's still a lot of clouds around, but they're beginning to thin out, which is why I think on Monday we should have a mix of clouds and sun and we should rise into the low to mid 70s on the last day of September. And that's right. October 1st is Tuesday. Right now I've got a mix of sun and clouds. The best chance of showers is in the afternoon. All these temperatures, by the way, through Tuesday are above average and those overnight lows are way above average. No, no, it's supposed to be in the 40s, but we do have one typical day Wednesday into Wednesday night. Thursday afternoon, we got the sun back. We're still mild next Friday as well. Stanley Law Skywatch. This is a little worse than it actually looks because, yes, there's cloud cover, but there's still filtered sun out there. You're up to date, guys. Back to you.